I know I'm late. I know. Um, but in my defense, I have no concept of what day it is. Going on a holiday in the middle of quarantine was just is a, is a terrible idea. I mean, I know nobody planned that, but I don't just. Let's jump into it. Hey everyone, it's me, Ellery, and I'm here with my very, very short recap <laughs> and review of episode seven of Insecure. So if you're interested, make sure you stick around and stay tuned. Also, I know you've probably already been here before, so if you have not already, make sure that you subscribe and then turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos from me. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into it. I am going to do a super short recap and review on episode seven of Insecure. Um, making it short and sweet, mainly because I'm super late putting my review up. Um, I just, I literally, y'all, I don't, I don't know what day it is. So, like I always do, let me give you my quick and dirty rundown. This is even dirtier than usual because it's going to be super short. I'm really just going to hit you up with the highlights. Okay. All right. So again, episode seven was called Low Key Trippin'. And this is the point of view with Molly post the fight with Issa. The episode actually opens up. Again, we're back at the Ethiopian restaurant and come to find out Molly saw Issa getting out the car, getting ready to come into the restaurant. And then Issa never shows up. So you already know that that set Molly off because it was like, oh, oh, I know she saw me because I saw her. So what you just not gonna do is come on in here. Okay, cool. Molly and Andrew, who go on a vacation. They actually take a trip to Mexico and she meets Andrew's brother and his wife. Um, everything seems to be going really great the entire time. Um, they really kind of just exploring their relationship with each other. They, um, Molly lets loose finally. She's like, you know, just being free, which I really loved and appreciated seeing from Molly. Um, things are going good, like I said, up until there's this moment where um, Molly is questioned for her key card in order to get a towel. She feels as if it was racist um, because she saw uh, two white people prior to that getting some towels. She doesn't remember the attendant asking for their key cards. His brother shows up. His brother, the whole episode is playing devil's advocate for a lot of things. And he continues to play devil's advocate in this um, conversation. Um, things go a little left between both parties involved. That's one of the arguments that we actually see happen. And then um, Andrew also receives a call from Nathan and we hear Issa in the background. And so, of course, that upset uh, Molly in its weird way because I don't understand why she was bothered. But anywho, <laughs> um, and so Andrew actually expresses to Molly that Nathan was dealing with mental health issues prior to when he kind of like ghosted on Issa. Um, and then she starts to question if Issa knows all of this stuff. He's like, I don't know, whatever. Um, and towards the end of the episode, we see that Molly actually calls her therapist, which finally, I've been waiting for her to call her. And she's like, I've just been having a hard time letting go of things. Duh, Molly. <laughs> I mean, four seasons. Take your ass to therapy. Okay, don't question if you need it because you do. We all do. At the point. Um, and then we see them head back. And at the airport, we finally see Lawrence, who has been missing for two episodes because you know I felt some type of way the fact that he was not at the block party. But come to find out, he still has some news that he needs to tell Issa, which we finally see that the two of them are going to sit down and talk after like, what? Well, four seasons now, really sit down and talk with each other. He has something to share with her and he was actually coming back from San Francisco. So I'm thinking it's either a new job, but with Insecure, you never know. It could be a baby. He could have had a child he didn't know about. It could be a new job. You know, he could be married now. Who knows? Who knows? You know, with Insecure, you just never know what left they're going to take. But the episode actually closes out um, with him calling and someone who we believe is going to be Issa because we see in the next preview that they hang out. And he's just like, hey, I've been thinking about you. How would you like to get together for some drinks? And then the episode closes out. And not to mention that this episode was actually also directed by Mr. J. Ellis himself, 
who plays Lawrence. So yeah, quick and dirty rundown. See, I told y'all I did that based on my time. I'm about three to four minutes in, right? Okay, so let me give you my review. Um, I thought the episode was really, really good. I loved it. Um, more than anything, I was looking at it from like a directorial stem standpoint because I knew that Jay Ellis was the director of this episode. So I was just kind of like looking at his angles and all these things because most directors, um, if you're a dork like me, you know that most directors kind of have things in which you know when you see it, like, oh, this is an Ava DuVernay um, piece. You know, um, um, what's his name? Michael Bay. Like, you know, certain directors, just how they film and bring things together. And so I was just kind of watching it from that standpoint. So I had to watch the episode several times. I really love Andrew for Molly. I'm really hoping that their relationship works out. <laughs> Y'all, because I love how he holds her accountable. I love how he, you know, he gives her this gentle push. He brings her back to reality. He brings her down. It's like he grounds her in a way that we have not seen with Molly. And I honestly think had it not been for this trip and the experience that she had with Andrew, the argument with the brother, all of that, I think she may not have thought that she needed to go back to therapy. In her defense, was the attendant probably being racist? Yes, this is not uncommon. We know that this happens a lot, but I just think as four adults, it could have been a great conversation to have. And I probably would have snatched the towel too, but I just would have got over it once I got into the pool because I'm also a mermaid. I hate that it kind of spoiled the trip. Like they all didn't hang out anymore after that. I just hate that it had to be so much of a thing. Um, to even where she felt like she ruined everything. Like I hated that part of it for her because her feelings were real. Like she wasn't wrong for her feelings. So that's why I say that I hate it. I don't hate how she felt. I hate, you know, anyway. They talked about in their wind down afterwards is the fact that Issa and Molly were still both very strong figures in their episodes even though they weren't even in the episodes one epiphany that i did have is that confession i think i have been a molly <laughs> um to somebody at some point in my life i think that i have been a molly and i think i've also been molly i really think that molly deserves a lot more um grace than people want to give her because when you also look over the last couple of seasons, Issa is not an innocent party <laughs> in why Molly is so frustrated. I mean, even the very first episode with the whole broken pussy rap, like you literally went up there and embarrassed the crap out of your friend after you tricked her into going out because you knew where you were going, you were possibly going to run into Daniel and you made it seem as if it was going to be like, oh, girls night out, we both need it, whoop de woo but really it was just a plot for you. I just feel like Issa is not an innocent party, but I feel like we're giving Issa a lot of grace solely based off of the block party, the success of the block party and Molly having this attitude and starting a fight at the block party. But that's not the only, that's not what got us here. And I feel like we're just forgetting everything else that happened before. Y'all might not want to confess it and you might not want to be honest with yourself, but I'm, I, I think that I've been a Molly. And I'm positive that I've been molly <laughs> Anyways, leave me some comments. Leave me your thoughts. Let me know how you're feeling so far about the entire season. But definitely let me know how you felt about this last episode. Um, I promise that the next recap and review will not take this long. Because I know that Sunday is Sunday. And outside of that, I really don't know what day it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my recap and my review that night. And it's going to be up on Monday. Hold me accountable, people. Um, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Until next time. Bye.